I miss lying here without you Begging my ring tone Knowing that it won't Still must have been hard for letting go Of all that we've been bringing Out in each other Revving in lovers Two spies beneath the covers Oh baby, you tell me All of the ways you want me Tied up in the grave of your head Don't leave me devoured By sleepless empty hours Wide awake just a wandering away I will never see you again mm -hmm. I hate the way you said goodbye Letting the door slam down on my dead hands But darling, even more than that I can't stand living on repeat Sullen and empty Stuck in my memory How could you do this to me When I want you, I need you I'll let any find you Bear to wash you off of my head Don't leave me, I'd rather Just stay like this forever Counting down the heartbeats till when I will never see you again I will never see you again I will never see you again I feel like I'm interrupting if I talk on the mic. And also, my phone's not staying on. This is my set list. I thought it would be easy. Um, I wrote this song before I had a life-changing breakdown last year. I want to cut, I want to run And I want nothing from anyone Let it lie behind me The mirage is there to find me I want to cut, I want to run But all my wheels are stuck on What can I do, I'm out of love could use some trust, but what can I do? My skin and my bones belong to the dust now. Ooh. Ooh. I'll go alone till it don't hurt and make my bed down in the dirt. Until all my demons vanish and the beast in me is banished I sleep the sleep that I deserve And I could use some help but what can I do out here fooling myself And I could use some trust but what can I do My dumb little heart belongs to the dust now My shadow knows what's going down It'll run my ass right out of town And when all of it is over When the weight is off my shoulder 
I hope that you'll still be around But all my wheels are stuck on what can I do I'm all out of luck Things could be looking up If I could just pick what shackle to cut And I pray I'm enough But what can I do? I'm too greedy to love Still I'll never give it up Till I can commit the fear in my heart on down to the dust on down to the dust Ooh, on down to the dust thanks y'all Hey Hannah, could you drop the Hey Hannah? Can you drop my the vocals in my uh, monitor like 10%? It's just me and myself up here. Uh, I got a record coming out as soon as I do all the work on that. Uh, the song is on it. It's called Bear in Your House. I'm taking all the blame This time I'll take it on the nose To give it to you straight I wanna give you what you want But how can I do it If you never wanna talk you need but it's not me Oh, everybody got quiet. Um, the song is about uh, greedy people. Mm -hmm. 
There was a time when I could sail over any old day on the envy of minor men and the lust of faithful women. But now it's a climb. It's a risky business for a man like me just showing your face. These days it's a crime. And it could all be gone in the blink of an eye And I gotta defend what's mine Cause I deserve more More than the 5% tin and the switchblade doors I'm a living for the gold, yeah When I don't understand How anyone could just fall out of love With such a talented man Doing the best that he can Cause it isn't my fault and it isn't my choice God gave me a gift and God gave me a voice I came here to play and I came here to gain So if you're gonna just bitch then get out of my way Cause there's too many hands in the pie and that pittance of yours It ought to be mine cause I deserve more more than the hot tub titties and the high rise decks, yeah, and the marble floors. Oh, and I deserve more. More than the endless parade of top tier hoes. Oh, I'm a living through the power, and power just wants more. And it's a walk in the park I got my eyes on the prize And my hands on the ass of the ball Oh yeah, I'm taking it all So come on and just feel me, feel me Up to the top, yeah, fuel me Fuel me every last drop Cause I know what I want And the wanting don't stop Only losers just want what they got And I deserve more and you say how to give it up What kind of fool do you take me for? Yeah, I'm blessed in the eyes of the Lord And I deserve more More in the safe More in the bank More in the sack More in the tank And two more in the stank When I'm gonna get them more Sleep down with one hand on the gun And two eyes on the door yeah, I'm living for nothing And nothing always wants more Nice. This song's called Dissin' Billies. I got a couple more for y'all. From all the rough stuff that I've done My own mama wouldn't look me in the eye And when I called her on the phone To tell her I ain't coming home She said, that's fine I got bigger fish to fry Oh, my heart Aching in the dark but I didn't come this far Just to break this heart again I'm laid on the line And in the darkest night I can feel that big light shining And I know I gotta try Cause our love keeps me alive
I was drifting on the wind, lostter than I've ever been, and I'm not sure I even wanted to be found. But you helped me see the good, and you showed me that I could, and now I'm standing up, and I ain't coming down. I didn't come this far just to break this heart up. I'ma lay it on the line, and in that darkest night, I can feel that big light shining, and I know I gotta try. Oh, it's hard. All the spite that I've been fighting, and the nights I sold to crying took their toll, and I know I'm not. And it almost feels like home. I didn't come this far just to break this heart again. I'ma lay it on the line. And in the darkest night, I can see that light inside, and I just can't help but shine. I didn't. Yeah, I, I know y'all know that one. Thanks. I um I have one more song for y'all. And I don't 
again To get back to the kind of living That ain't dying The night ain't over But I know what I gotta do And I don't wanna do it if I do without you So if you're feeling like I'm feeling, baby It's time I'm ready for it Ooh, 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 ooh. It's time I'm ready for it Thank y'all very much. I'm Mary Steele. Um, that's all I got. Uh, please stick around. I know you're gonna. I know you're gonna. We're all gonna get. We're all gonna learn so many good things tonight. Yeah. Thank you all. All right. Well, we are gonna have a nice little conversation tonight about health and wellness for those of us in the music industry. Um, I am so excited to have Nick DeAndre here from We Amplify Voices. Ooh. Kicking it off in conjunction with Miss Amber Nicole, our board member for Music Columbus, and Mr. Robert Taylor Jr. here, all the way from Los Angeles, representing Music Cares. So they're going to talk a little bit about their experiences in the music industry and a lot of the changes that we've gone through the past couple of years, some, some things we can do to take care of ourselves, and some resources available, particularly through Music Cares. So I'm going to hand it over to them. And we'll have a good night. Awesome. Check. Right, one, thanks, two. Check, 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 check. Mic check. check. One, two. <laughs> you guys just want to do an acapella <laughs> song real quick? Oh, we could <laughs> actually. <laughs> right, right, right. We, don't, don't, uh, don't threaten me with a good time. I'll do it. <laughs> right, we'll do it. All right. Whatever. Why is it, like, so important to have this conversation right now um, just about mental health and how it connects to music and just all the different things that, that you're both a part of? Sure, I'll start. Um, so I'm representing Music Cares tonight, and um, our mission is um, we help the humans behind the music because the music gives so much to the world. And so when thinking about even the mission of Music Cares, um, I think what better place um, than now to have the conversation around mental health because if we're helping the humans behind the music, we have to make sure that they're in a good place that they can give the music to the world. And so I think this conversation probably could have happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago, but I'm happy that it's happening now. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, we're, I'm just gonna hold this. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> <sighs> all right, all right. So um, I do think this is a conversation that we need to have. We have, like Robert said, we've needed to have this conversation yeah. for a very long time. And as musicians, you know, I'm in Mojo Flow, and one of the things that we have always done is had a We'll try to have a positive outlook, be music that is uplifting, be music that is inspiring, because there is so much going on all the time. Yeah. And it's not always easy to come from that place. And so I just think it's very important to even help yourself as an artist be able to stay on whatever brand you're trying to stay on. It kind of helps with having focus, because it's very difficult. I feel like all of us as artists, art is also our escape. Music is also our escape. So whatever we're going through, we put that in our music. Well, if you're going through all of your heavy stuff, your music is going to reflect that. And what if that's not what I want to put out in the world? You know, so then you have to do some healing of your own and you don't necessarily get to use, well, you can still use music as your coping mechanism, but you don't always get to put that out and you don't necessarily even want to put that out, you know? So um, I think that that's another reason why we need to be having this conversation. I think it helps with your business and with your brand even. Yeah. 
Yeah. One last thing. I think also, as artists, I don't know if we always are comfortable enough to have a conversation around wellness, but even mental health. I think for so long it has been a stigma, at, especially in minority populations or communities. And so the more that we have this conversation, the better. Yeah. yeah. Um, it kind of struck me just when you were saying of like, <clears throat> the the wellness of of the people that are creating the music and kind of just like the ripple effect that that has. And I was just thinking about, you know, your song, like uh, Perpetual Conduit of Positivity, you know, and like how that, you know, the intention behind that too, of spreading positivity. And can you speak to, I'm just going to riff a little bit. Cause yeah. yeah, like, so like with that song in particular, like where do you feel like you were at, you know, in writing that song and kind of what was the intention of that to, you know, spread into the community? Well, Thanks for asking that question, and thank you for that, um, for acknowledging our song. Yeah. Um, yeah, our song is called Perpetual Conduit of Positivity. Um, I am a long-winded songwriter, and so that is why <laughs> that is a very long title. But that song in particular, I'm talking about um, just going through life, and you think that you got it together, but then something happens, and you're like, oh, no, I got the rug pulled out underneath me. But within that process of going through that, you feel like you're losing everything, but you're actually learning everything. And you're actually figuring out, so the, the lyrics there, it's funny because it, it's funny because it feels like you're falling. It's crazy because you learn how to fly. And so, thank you. That's and so, good. yeah, and so like, you know, and then we end, <laughs> thank you, thank yeah. you. And so we end that song with a call and response, um, I'll be a light, we'll be all right. And that is um, really what we'd say is a promise to, that we make as people with each other, mm -hmm. saying that we'll do our best to, to be illuminated, knowing that mm -hmm. it's hard to stay that way. And so if all of us say, okay, we're gonna really be, be tender with each other, mm -hmm. that we can all make it through, and then, uh, COVID happened. Yeah. So we came out with that uh, January of 2020 wow. and we were like, all right, yeah, here we go. Everything's like, you know, it's, it, we're doing it. The 2020s are here. It's good, man, 2020, <laughs> no one's ready for 2020. Yeah. We weren't. And then, and then 2020 <laughs> happened and it was like, but we have this song that was already out in the world that I was like, well, great. We have to like, that is something to hold on to, mm -hmm. to, to, you know, to motivate and to help you figure out where you're gonna go and where you wanna be. But I just didn't wanna write a sad song because I was sad in those moments. Um, and this was before COVID. I was, you know, you're just going through your life. You know, you're yeah. just growing up and, mm -hmm. you know, life and being, yeah. a, being an artist and all the things that get thrown up in your face and that you have to deal with and then, yeah, everything. And I was like, you know, I, I could sit down, I can write a torch song in a second. Like, you know, oh wait, there we go. I can write a torch song in a second. That was not better. But. Um, fast you know i can i can i can be sad i can be angry in a song like really good like and that'll come out in 30 minutes yeah. but the good stuff can come out in 30 minutes too totally, you know yeah. if you just mm -hmm. go there but i just you know mm -hmm. in that song in particular we just didn't i didn't want to put out anything sad mm -hmm. and anything angry and anything mm -hmm. melancholy sure mm -hmm. not that there's not a place for that because we yeah. do have that mm -hmm. but it just mm -hmm. that wasn't the place yeah yeah so I work with Music Cares, but I'm also a music artist. Um, and so uh, most of my music is inspirational or uplifting. You know, I got a little bit of love songs too, you know. But uh, mainly I want people to feel good. And so there's a song that I wrote called Days Go By. Um, because honestly, we've all had a bad day. Has anyone ever had a bad day? We've all had bad days. Um, the beauty in that is that those days go by and we get a new opportunity to experience a whole nother life with new perspective the very next day. And so I think, even to your point, the song you wrote, um, we needed that in 2020. I'm just hearing about it today, but I'm gonna go home and download it. <laughs> because there's gonna come a day, hopefully not soon, but <laughs> where I'm gonna need inspiration and I can go to that song, or I could go to Days Go By. And that's why supporting artists is so important. Um, literally, that's our mission. We support the humans behind the music because they give so much to us. If we think about music, um, literally, when we're working out, it's our motivation. When we're down and we need a lift, it's our motivation. It's our inspiration. Um, when we're ready to go out because we're going to go have a good time with our homegirls, our homeboys, it gets us pumped. It gets us going. It's literally the soundtrack of our lives. Why not support that community? <laughs> um, so we kind of touched on it a little bit of just like, you know, going into COVID and, and how that shifted and like from, from both of your different perspectives, like 
kind of what helped you navigate that as musicians and um, to kind of use your craft of music um, positively to kind of like navigate that time? Yeah, good question. Um, I'll speak a personal perspective and then um, something that we saw that I've seen also with the, the, the musicians that I work with. And so I was living in New York City when the um, pandemic hit. Um, and so I was living the dream which was a struggling artist. <laughs> um, but even in that, um, I was enjoying the process. And so what I've noticed is that when the pandemic hit, um, we really just had to learn how to pivot. Because there still was opportunity to create music, still opportunity to give it away. We just had to pivot. And so what I chose to do, I decided to go back to school um, um, and I study vocal performance just because, again, this was just an opportunity to do that. Um, still creating, still mastering my craft, just in a different way. That was me. Now, also speaking about some of the, the artists that we serve at Music Cares, um, many of them were touring. Um, and then when the pandemic hit, that opportunity was gone. And so not just for the front man, um, but the whole entire band, the tour bus driver, the crew, everyone was impacted by this pandemic. And what we saw with our artists is that they really just learned how to pivot. And so maybe that meant I'm going to sign up to sell some music on Sound Better. Or maybe I'm going to teach some lessons on the side. Maybe I'm going to create a YouTube channel and sing and give lessons even or sell merch. It was an opportunity for creatives to be more creative yeah. and really try to find a way to maintain their artistry um, when the world was really falling apart. I completely agree. Pivot is the perfect word because that is exactly what we had to do. Um, you know, we sat there and I remember, I will never forget, my brother was visiting from Dayton. It was his birthday week. So it put us at Mar in the beginning of March. And all of a sudden, every all the cancellations started coming through, just cancellation after cancellation. After, and I'm sitting there on my phone looking at like, all of, there goes our whole year. It's, it's, it's yeah. gone. So Pivoting, of course, is exactly what we had to do. I ended up doing a lot of work with Nick, with Wave, um, and we went virtual. Um, yeah. We worked with, on a project called Bridges of Love, worked with kids and families of women at the Women's Correctional Facility in Marysville. And um, we wrote songs with these people, with these families and the mothers who were incarcerated. And we did that all online. It was all Zoom. And we met with these families every week um, for, it was for months. It was, a, but it was a saving grace because we were writing songs, yeah. making music and putting it all together. I also took that time to, to go to some extra schooling myself, but in a different way, I got my, uh, trauma informed yoga for youth certification. I also got my 200 hour yoga certification. And then with Nick, with Wave, I did training with mind body, the center for mind body medicine, the professional training and the advanced training, which ended up being about 80 hours. 80, 80 hours of instruction and then untold amount of hours in actual application and practice and, you know, homework, if you will. So, I um, mean, I've incorporated that stuff into my class that I teach. Um, we do a whole mental health week awesome. where we incorporate all that because it's, it's a musical, music industry course. And I'm like, I refuse to let you all go through this course mm. without having some of these tools because these are the tools that I got that helped me to um, untangle my knots. Yeah. You know, to make everything, okay, we've got all this jumble. What about this? What about this? And I just thought, I felt myself and found myself, yeah, definitely found myself, but just being able to go, oh, emotion, going through it, we're going through it. You know, where we learned about, you know, your amygdala and your brain and your sympathetic system and your parasympathetic system, your fight or flight responses, all of that. We learned about all of that stuff. And it was just, it was great because then I was able to incorporate that into life and it, what was going on. And I also did some um, online theater with yeah. Columbus Immersive Theater because Short North Stage could not call themselves, could not do anything because they're an equity house. Oh. And so when you're equity, they could equity shut it down. Yeah. So you are not allowed to do anything. And so you had to be, they had to create, they had to pivot as well. So we did, yeah. we did uh, shows and vir just virtually. So that was a whole nother thing too. The masks, the, uh, yeah. the clear ones where we all were like, 
you know, like was it an alien or something where it's like, I'm wrong. but um, you know, we did it though. We're, and we look at pictures of that, like, man, remember when we had these masks on and like it was like our half our faces were covered, but we were up there singing anyways. And um, pivot though, I think pivot and, and be creative is really what we got to do. But I, I'm I'm okay if we don't have to pivot anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We've pivoted out. Yeah, I think I feel like I'm pivoted out. Kind of on that note, uh, like, what do you feel like, and just, you know, speaking earlier to the positivity, like, what do you feel like is one positive that came from those pivots that you've kept with you and carried with you from that time? Oh, well, my, all my training. Yeah. All of my training. Um, I constantly do soft belly breathing, uh, which is just... Inhale through your nose and thinking the word soft. Exhale through your mouth thinking the word belly. And so just, and you just sit there and you just soft belly, soft belly, soft belly. And you just go through that and you just like, chill. it helps put me to sleep at night because of course, as soon as my head hits the pillow, everything that I could possibly be thinking about starts running through. And I'm just like, really? I was like, yeah, I was in second grade when that happened. Come on, brain, move on. <laughs> so like, you know, but I remember. So it's just that. That so really just helping self-regulate yeah, is really good. what I've kept with me. Yeah, I think for me, um, I thought I was a hustler before. I really learned how to hustle during the pandemic. <laughs> I mean, it, to your point earlier, everything was virtual for the most part. But in that, I had the most work. I sung at Howard University's graduation ceremony, birthday ceremonies, <laughs> weddings, funerals, all because, you know, there was opportunity. Yeah. Um, and if I wasn't getting work or shows because of the pandemic, let me, again, be creative. Let me find this work. Yeah. And so that has stuck with me. Yeah. And I'm still hustling. Yeah. <laughs> and you're still here. And I'm still... We, that's really good. She didn't have the mic, but she said, and I'm still here. We are still here after this pandemic that was super unpredictable. Um, and... We say it all the time, if I made it through that, I can make it through anything. But literally, there was no blueprint, and we made it through right. as musicians and as artists. And I think that's to be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We've kind of touched on this, you know, a couple different times. But in, like, you know, mentioned, like, the soft belly breathing and everything. Like, um, like, what strategies, like, do you practice yourselves or that you feel you know, are helpful that have not just helped your um, own mental health, but maybe your creative practices too. And like, maybe like how, how have you noticed your creative process change as you start doing some of those mental health things? Sure. I'll take it. Um, a couple of things. Um, one, I'm a big advocate of therapy um, prior to uh, working in music full time, um, I was a family therapist um, and I also did therapy on the collegiate level. And I think it's something to be said about having a conversation out loud because more times than not, we're having the conversation in our own heads. Um, but even having someone to speak to, hey, this is what I'm feeling. And then we can think about the pros and the cons, the ups and the downs, the pluses and deltas. Um, that's just a way to get it out. And I'm a big advocate for therapy, and I love that even in the music community, it is becoming more popular. Um, I think Charlemagne the God is a big advocate of um, mental health, Demi Lovato, so many different artists, um, and I, I love to see it. So advocate of therapy. Something that's really simple, um, working out or getting some type of physical activity, at least daily. Yeah. Um, getting some vitamin D, taking a walk. Um, it doesn't have to be long, um, but just getting out, yeah. getting some sun exposure is really helpful. Yeah. Um, I could go on, I'll say two more. Yeah. <laughs> um, one, uh, one other thing I think is super helpful for me is simply practicing gratitude. Mm. It doesn't take a lot. Yeah. Um, it's not expensive at all. It's not a lot of money. Just really think about something that you're grateful for. Um, and I was doing some research actually this past weekend, um, and just thinking about one thing that you're grateful for can increase your happiness by 10% immediately. Um, and that's something that I've learned to do over the years. I want to say since 2013, just finding something that I'm grateful for, three things actually, each morning, and that has really helped me, um, I think, to increase my mental wellness. And then the last thing I'll say as it relates to 
Actually, I'm talking enough. You can yeah. go. Please, please, no, please, the last. Okay. Um, I may have forgotten it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'll let you take it. All right. So we were, you talked about, we were at exercise. We were at exercise, yeah. out, being outside. Oh, thank Gratitude you. I and, caught it. Good. As an artist, thank you so much. You helped me out. I think it's so important to take breaks. Mm. It wow. is okay to take yes. breaks, whatever that looks like. If you are experiencing writer's block, it's a great opportunity to take a break. Put that song down. Maybe go watch a movie. Go do your dishes, because you know you got some. <laughs> Come back to that song later. Maybe even go for that walk that we talked about. Get something to drink. Go talk to a friend. Um, and that is going to really give you so, so much more energy than I think you probably expected. So take breaks. I love that. And, and what we did, so one thing we did, and, and you talking on that third one made me think about, we started calling our friends on, you know, FaceTime. We don't, so I'm an Android user, so we don't have FaceTime like that. But um, we started just using Instagram to like, hey, are you going to be online? And everybody's like, yeah, of course. So we just started calling people and set up the phone sit on the couch, and then chat. Love it. And just would talk to each other. And, like, then that turned into, you know, oh, I'm going to go grab a, you know, a glass of wine or, you know, a bottle of wine, you know. Um, and because we're at home and we're locked in. But, you know, and you would go and you would sit and you would chat. And we'd look up and it'd be three hours. Yeah. And we're like, oh, I really needed that. And so that's really something that we like to do is we still call up our friends who are who don't live in Columbus and, well, the family one kind of fell off. Um, but we still call the family. You know, it was good while it lasted. It was good while it lasted. Yeah, well, it was just so funny because my parents were like, we were trying to do like a Zoom family thing, and there's only four of us. So we were just like, okay, well, see you later, you know. So, but it was fun. It was really fun. And they, um, it's neat walking your parents through technology and things like that. And not that I'm any better, but that, I give that to my brother to do. So, um, but yeah, we, we just, we really found ways to connect and to stay connected and to, to talk to people, to actually not just be in our own space, in our own bubble and not see, because we already knew we weren't going to see each other, you know, so it was like, we can call. So that was the one thing that we did that we still do now, which is really nice. Yeah, I, I know we're, we're focusing, too, um, on music cares and um, on the different, you know, resources that are available for musicians there. But then, too, maybe more generally, like, what are some of those changing needs that you're seeing with artists? And, like, you know, what does it look like to um, help the humans behind the music kind of thing? And, like, how do those needs change and kind of what are the different ways they can be met? Yeah, great question. So um, we do a survey um, annually at Music Cares. Um, we've been doing it for three years. So 2020, right after the pandemic, um, 2021, 2022, um, 2023. Um, and so we send an email, we created this survey, um, this study, um, and we send an email to all of the recording um, academy members, but then also to all of the, the musicians that we serve. And I think we found a couple of different things. One, majority of our respondents, 54% um, of them said that they experienced either um, moderate or super high anxiety. 52% said that they experienced um, moderate or either high um, depression. Um, and so that was actually um, right on brand nationwide as well. And so that was one of the things that stood out to us. And so we wanted to see how can we um, better support these communities, well, this, this music community. And so what we created um, in 2020, um, a toolkit, and it's called Resilience um, on the road. And it's primarily for musicians who are touring, but also um, just for everyday musicians who are at home. And so it's a, a beautiful toolkit um, that where you can find a seven minute workout or a five minute guided meditation. Um, we talked about this earlier in the week. Um, or there are different um, YouTube videos where we've teamed up with different celebrities, and we had one conversation um, around uh, mental health for men specifically, and then prevention of suicide rates. Uh, we have a podcast that's dedicated completely to sober living. And so it's a beautiful resource that's available for everybody in here for free. Um, you can really just go to musiccares.org, um, and it's a library of resources um, to help artists who are on the go, but also at home, um, because 
Here's the thing about touring and being an artist. We are so busy. We are so busy and oftentimes we don't have the, the opportunity to go and sit um, for a therapy session, although I'm an advocate of therapy. Or to, to maybe be, have a gym membership if I'm on the road constantly. And so it was, really was a, a library of resources that was accessible um, so that all of our clients um, could really get what they need so that they can increase their mental wellness. I know we talked, like one thing that kind of came up too was like the ability to access health insurance specifically. I know that was something that like generates a lot of interest in the music community. Can you speak a little bit like specifically to that too? Of sure. Like how, what that might look like for yeah. um, P anyone in the music industry. And sure. it's not just specifically musicians, but like anybody in the music industry too. Or yeah, I can speak specifically to um, the clients that we serve. Um, I brought some stats. Let me pull this out for you all. Um, so that I don't make sure that I'm giving you all accurate information. So, again, with this survey that we did, we found that um, even thinking about the therapy, um, so 57, this is great. So in 2020, 49% of our clients were interested in therapy. That's 49%. This year, in 2023, it had increased to 57%. But what we found was a large population did not have health insurance. Mm -hmm. So even if they were interested in it, they really couldn't attend yeah. um, because of the lack of resources. And so even thinking about health insurance, um, health insurance coverage is 87% among our respondents. So that's pretty high if you think about it. So all of the, um, the respondents to our survey, 87% of them had health insurance. And so to me, I'm thinking, oh, that's really good. And so then we looked at what is the average nationwide? So non, so not just music community. Um, and so nationwide, it says that 91% of people had health insurance. And I'm thinking that cannot be right. <laughs> that cannot be right, but it kind of is right. But what we do know is that there's limited health insurance. So even Medicaid and Medicare is included in that 91%. There still is a large population um, of Americans, but mostly, well, also um, musicians who don't have that health insurance. Um, and it's conversations that we're having at Music Cares as well as with the Recording Academy, really advocating and partnering with other organizations to see what we can do. Um, so we don't necessarily provide health insurance with Music Cares, but for example, if you can't pay your health insurance for a month or maybe three months, maybe even six months, we might be able to cover that for you until you can get on your feet. If you're lacking health insurance in general, then at least in LA, like we partner with different organizations for musicians and artists specifically um, to try to get you that health insurance. But um, overall, we're seeing that there is a need for more coverage. How would you say like the whole landscape of the music industry has changed in the past couple of years, or, or, or has it in the way that everything came out of COVID, like as far as live performances and like, do things look different, do you feel like for, for most musicians from what it did four years ago? Yes, things do look different. Um, things are finally coming back. So once 2020 happened, there was this, okay, when do we go back to normal, right? So, you know, we saw, we personally saw our calendar go from full to Empty, completely empty. Um, and it took more than just 2021 for everything to get back into where it was going. So what we saw was were, were clients that were still nervous about throwing their conventions, still didn't want to book something three months or six months in advance. You know, we went, we went from being booked typically a year to nine months in advance to being booked maybe three months in advance. And, and sometimes, you know, if we're available, sure. But, you know, that's, we're seeing clients not really wanting to book things. Festivals didn't come back at first either. Like everything didn't come back um, right away. And then also I think what we've been seeing too are that now that everything is back, everyone's going on tour. Yes. We had, yeah. you know, Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Pink, all on tour at the same time, you know, and you're like, oh. and, um, that's a lot going on. And so, um, but I'm glad to see everything back. That's yeah. for sure. You know, festivals back, all that stuff. But it took a while. And I think that was what surprised. I wasn't ready for that so much. I thought that maybe once it was done or it was COVID was over, yeah. there would be a definitive mark and when it was over. Just like there was a definitive mark on when it got here, kind of, you know. So that didn't happen. But now I feel like things are, things are still better now, but they're not back to where they were just yet as far as where we're at. 
I agree. I think what we're seeing with most of the artists that we um, serve is that a lot of them and a lot of us are still recovering from the pandemic. We're still recovering. Um, just recently, I had an artist that I was working with um, who really had to use most of his 401k um, for his mortgage during the pandemic because he didn't want to go into foreclosure. Now here in 2023, there's an amazing opportunity to go on tour, but he can't afford it because of the pandemic. And so that was an opportunity where we were able to step in at least for a month or two just to assist because again, we want to support the music makers. Um, but to that point, we are still recovering. What I'm seeing specifically with our um, touring clients or, or musicians is that Again, they're just being a little bit more strategic. They're pivoting. And so maybe now they used to do maybe a seven city regional tour. Maybe now they can only do four. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they used to go out with a full band. Maybe now it's an acoustic set. And so again, being creative, making a pivot. Um, but that's some of the things that we're seeing. And also, ticket sales are a little bit more slower than what they were. So yes, things are back and these big concerts are happening, uh, but even some of the regional shows um, aren't selling as much as they were prior to um, the pandemic. Even now, recently, I just had a show in North Carolina a week ago, and I was going to cancel it because the ticket sales were so slow. I didn't cancel it. It went really well. <laughs> <laughs> People came out. Um, but to that point, um, we are still recovering, and we're still getting back to that place. We're not quite there yet. Yeah. I was just kind of was thinking like ahead to the future and we've talked about like positivity and just kind of like the role that music can play in um, just kind of setting a mindset for people too. like what is kind of like one intention that you would have for, you know, your local community, but then also like the larger community um, setting a positive intention for what you would like to see in your own community, in the larger community and how that can happen through your music and then also what advice you would give to other musicians that kind of want to do the same thing. Sure. Good question. And my, my intention um, is to be positive, empowering, and to leave folks better than when I found them. Ooh. So, and to be the soundtrack to that. Yeah. Um, I that. However, however it needs to be. Um, that's the intention behind our music. That's the intention behind where I'm coming from as an artist. Um, I want people to feel empowered. I want people to feel like they can do it. Whatever it is, I want them to feel like, yeah, I got that, you know? And I want our, our music to be the soundtrack to that, to the, the soundtrack to getting it, getting it in and getting it done and, and having fun while you're at it, you know, because we're still living life and, you know, you should have some fun. And so, our, you know, that's our music. Our music is, you know, party, fun, upbeat, energetic. And that's, you know, we got some ballads in there, of course. But, you know, it's, you know, it's about, and, that, and even that, that's a love song, you know, and it's, it's just, it's about putting out, positivity about putting out putting out goodness yeah. and hoping that that creates a ripple effect and to get for advice for any other artist I would say you know really think about what you want to put out think about um think about what your brand is think about what your messaging is and overall also uh, think about if you want to be singing those songs in you know five years from now you know you might be in a really you might be in a, in a uh, you know, in a jagged little pill phase of your life, but do you really want to sing? Uh, you know, do you want to, you know, do you want, do you, are you here to remind him of the mess he left when he went away um, all the time? Now, if that was my song, I would sing that till the cows come home. Don't get me wrong. I love that. And it's, there's always time for jagged little pill. But that's something that I had to really, I wanted to think about. It was like, you know, who would I want to be and what, what is that, you know, what does that image look like when it comes to Mojo Flow? So to put it out there and I saw yeah to just think about what you want and then if if you want to be that if that's what you, if you're edgy and you want to be that then you know go for it absolutely but just put intention behind it yeah um to your point I love that I think my personal um intention is always to give peace love and joy with every song that I sing, um, with every conversation that I have I would love for that person that I'm talking to to leave better than how I met them if at all possible. Now, do I have that much power? No, but 
I'm going to give you peace, love, and joy. When I think about the music community um, as a whole, one thing that I would love to see um, for us to really come together and support each other, um, even seeing the actors in the writer's strike, um, seeing them come together in, in such a unifying way was really beautiful to watch. Um, and I would love for us to do that as well in our industry. Um, and even if that means um, spreading resources or sharing resources or saying, hey, Amber, um, I noticed that blah, 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 maybe you should take a nap, yeah. <laughs> you know? or, or maybe you should take a break. Um, and so just being a little bit more supportive and intentional about um, the unity we have as musicians. Yeah. 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 Um, to, just touching off of that, too, like community gets attached to music so often. Like, what are some of like just the kind of like grassroots, like, beautiful ways you've seen music make community, you know, over your lives? Like, what, what does that look like? And, you know. I think I'll start with just simple local open mics. Yeah. If you go to an event weekly or even come in here, um, Music Mondays, right? Mm -hmm. And so the more that we come, we're going to meet people. Like, I met a Robert today. Yeah. Is he here? <laughs> Maybe he left. <laughs> but I also met a Joey. Yeah. Hey, Joey. And then if I came back another Monday, I'll see Joey again. And now we have even more to talk about because we're, we're, we're being intentional about being in each other's presence. So I think that's really a, a simple way to build community. Um, but also, let us not forget the power of social media. Um, I'm going to follow Amber after this event because I want to hear about this song. <laughs> um, but then because I know that you are a working musician, I'm going to be very eager to like your comment to even share, to, to, to support your music, because again, <laughs> we all we got, right, yes. <laughs> essentially. Um, so I think those are two ways. Um, utilize social media, but also utilize um, your local and regional platforms. I agree. Um, this just, I've, what I've seen is people dancing together. It's the most beautiful thing when you look out into the crowd and you watch the crowd go from kind of standing and getting into it and then you look around and people are dancing together. You know, one part of our show is a soul train line and I'm like, just split up. Like it doesn't matter what, what happens this side, this side and now we go. And the best part is that people will go, oh, I'm on the other side of you. Okay, me, you go. And they'll, you know, dance on down the, the aisle and it's great and it's just like or some people go oh maybe not I can't you're like come on yes you can you know and so they do and you see people smile and dancing as we learned in our um, yeah. in our in our training dancing is one of the forms of meditation there's shaking and dancing and then it's literal shaking so you go through and you shake every part of your body and then you really just literally dance a little bit you know you dance through a three-minute song and just and just sit in that stillness when you're done and go, oh wow, and so like dancing, and that's your physical activity too. You mess around and you trick yourself into doing a nice little 30 minute cardio. You're like, is that sweat on my brow? It is, you know, and then boom, you've gotten some actual movement going and that's good for you. And there's that social connection. And then you met a friend, you know, oh, we yeah. danced down the soul train line together. You sure did, you know, and now you have something to talk about, you know, and um, so that's what I've seen. And I really love that that's a part of what we do. And we're actually going to do a Soul Train line tonight. Yes, and, and speaking right of, after of this right, conversation. Yes. Where's Mary? We need you to sing. <laughs> I would love to just share the resources that we provide at Music Cares. Um, because I think it's really important um, for all of the musicians here. We're good. Okay, cool. All right. Um, how many musicians, artists, anyone that works in music in the building? All of us. Beautiful. All right, so if you haven't heard Music Cares, um, we provide financial assistance. Um, we surprise, provide, excuse me, services to um, artists, musicians, but not just them, um, tour, tour bus drivers, managers. Um, maybe you are a graphic designer for um, 
a musician, then you as well. So if you are contributing to music at all, um, essentially we can support you and we can do that in five different ways. Um, the first way and the primary way that we provide services is through our financial assistance. And so we do this um, through three different categories. We have a mental health category, um, medical, and then we have human services. And so maybe you need some therapy or maybe we need some substance abuse treatment or a detox program that on our mental help component of this program, if you are eligible, and I'll talk about that, then we can get you some treatment. If you have a medical bill that's outstanding, or maybe you're gonna have a surgery in the future, or maybe you have a dental bill that's a little bit too expensive, we can help you um, with our medical grant. But then also with the human side, uh, which is where I work, um, maybe you can't pay your rent, or maybe you can't pay your mortgage, or maybe you're behind on your car payment, um, or maybe, someone in your family passed away and you have funeral expenses, then we can help. And so our grants are short-term emergency grants. And essentially, um, if something in your life has happened and it changed um, your income, and that could be whether it was personal, mental, or even work-related, um, then that's emergency and we want to assist. And so you will simply apply for one of our short-term grants and then we can provide you with some aid for some of these services. How are you eligible for these services? So it's really simple. Um, two ways is how we check eligibility. Um, either you have um, five um, music critics that are streaming on musical platforms like Spotify or um, Apple Music, things like that. If you have five credits, um, then you're eligible for our services. The other way, um, maybe you don't have those five credits, but you've been I take that back, that's six credits. Maybe you don't have those six music credits, but you've been working actively in the music industry for at least five years. And so this is paid work. Um, and so maybe you have pay stubs or W2 showing that I'm a working musician for at least five years, then you're eligible for our services. So it's not a lot at all. Either I got six songs on Spotify or I got Five pay stubs showing that I've been working in the industry for five years. And then you're eligible for our services. And so what's, what's important to note is that, is that it has to be an emergency. Um, you have to be in need of the service. Um, you just can't be. <laughs> Maybe you've been partying all night long. I don't know. I won't go into it, but you have to be eligible. It has to be an emergency, right? And so we'll talk about that. So that's our first way, financial assistance. The second way that we provide services is through our clinics. And so we attend a lot of festivals nationwide, and in those festivals, our target population are the artists. Not necessarily the attendees, but the artists. And so during those festivals, we provide um, free earplugs um, for them because we are always, we are, um, we have a partnership with an organization called Tuned, and so we provide fear, I mean, free earplugs because we are, music is loud, and we're always in it, so we wanna make sure that we have good ear health as well. Um, in addition to that, we also provide um, dental clinics around the nation, and so maybe you need a dental screening, um, or maybe you need some dental work done, you can come to one of our clinics, and we will uh, make sure that you get your needs met. And again, those same um, eligibility required, I mean, um, that is what is gonna be required to get those services. Um, and you can find out all about that on our website at musiccares.org. Another way that we give is with our disaster relief. And so if there is a major disaster, like recently we helped out with um, the disaster that happened in Maui, Hawaii. And so we had some musicians um, that maybe, hey, I lost everything. I lost all of my instruments, all of my gear, my laptop, with all of my sessions, then we can step in and we can um, support and maybe get you a new laptop or maybe pay your rent so that you can then use that money um, to get you some more instruments. And so Hurricane Katrina, we were there. Obviously, during the pandemic, we support it. And so that's another way. Two more ways and then I'll be done. <laughs> Just wanna make sure y'all get all of these resources. Um, another thing that's really important is through our educational programs. So prior to the pandemic, we had a lot of events in person, whether in LA or Nashville or New York, we always had um, events talking about financial literacy. Um, because maybe I'm a new artist, or maybe I just got a new record deal and I don't know how to manage this money, we would have different programs on how to better educate our artists and the music community. Um, in addition to that, um, we just recently, I just recently had a, a workshop and it was specifically for um, 
black musicians and artists, and we talked about credit because that's something that's taboo and we don't always talk about it in the minority um, communities. And so we had an expert come in and talk about what um, healthy credit looks like. Um, in addition to that, we've had resources, um, workshops about tenant rights. And so I don't know if you all are experiencing it in Columbus, but in Washington State, as well as in Atlanta and Houston and in LA for sure, um, rent was really high um, because there was a moratorium and so our clients were not paying rent for maybe two years. And for some of them now they have $30,000 of rent. And so we have these conversations about what rights do you have? Um, if you are evicted, you can do this, this, and this. Here is another resource that, because we, let me just put this out there, we can't pay the whole 30,000. We can help out, but here's another resource that can also help out. Here's another organization that help out. And if, we, and if you utilize all of these resources, then maybe you can get your need met. And so we have these educational programs multiple times during the month, and those programs are also available on our website at musiccares.org. And then the last way um, that we are providing services is with a very new initiative um, that we started this year. It's called Humans of Hip Hop H3. Uh, we realized that with all of this, we've been a, around maybe 34 years, and we realized with our research that um, the hip hop genre and then also the African American population is the least served population and so we really wanted to be intentional about serving this population and so this is the 50 year anniversary of hip hop and so we wanted to be intentional and we're partnering with um, different hip hop artists and we're going to different cities in the nation, Atlanta, Compton, Philly and we are intentionally having conversations around the importance of seeking help in the music industry. We're providing resources um, to this community, um, and we're encouraging them to apply for our services. And just like we're encouraging them to apply for our services, I'm encouraging you all to apply for our services and not just apply, but spread the word. The word. Tell all of your artists and musicians who couldn't be here tonight that there are resources available for the music community, and I would love to be a resource to you. Um, Amy and Olivia, they have my contact information. If you have a question, Rob, am I eligible for this medical grant? Email me and I'll, I will talk about it. Or you can call me directly and we'll talk about it and I would love to assist all of the musicians in this community as best as we can at Music Cares. Um, take out your phone. I want you to take down my email. <laughs> I feel kind of bossy right now. <laughs> so if you have any questions, you can email me at robert.taylorjr. That's R-O-B-E-R-T dot T-A-Y-L-O-R-J-R at musiccares.org. Let me know that I met you at um, Music Columbus, and let me know what your question is, and I would love to get back to you and get you your answer and maybe some additional resources. And that's music. Music cares like M-U-S-I-C-A-R-E-S. There's no double C, right? Great, great question. Yes, just one C. All right. Music cares okay. with one C. Um, we'll open it up to questions, too. Um, did anybody have any... Um, Follow-up questions? Bruce, in the back. Oh, man, I don't need a microphone. Um, on, the website, on the website, for qualifications, it says commercially released product. Are you saying that anybody who posts any kind of songs on any of the, you know, any of the digital platforms is considered commercially released? Yes. Um, so here's the thing. If you are getting paid for your music um, and your music is available for download, streaming or um, yeah, download or streaming, then essentially you qualify. Yes. Now, remember that, yes, you qualify. You're eligible for services, but it still has to be an emergency. It can't be Christmas is coming up and I want to get my boo a trip to Disney World. Maybe not. <laughs> but if or Christmas, if Christmas is coming up and maybe uh, I got laid off, or maybe a tour got canceled, that's an emergency. We can assist you. So, I'm, um, so kind of following up to that, um, I had a question about like the, the credits, like the six credits that you need. Um, does that count, um, 
or does it have to be an artist credit or can it also be like an engineer credit? Um, Beautiful question. Um, it has to be a credit. So you don't have to be the artist. Remember, we serve all music makers. And so if you're an engineer on the track, again, if you created the graphics for the track, um, then we want to serve you and we can serve you. Thank you. That was awesome. That really felt a great way to start the week. Yeah. Good job, you all. <laughs> and where can we find you online? Under Is it under Robert Taylor Jr., your artist name? No, so um, at Music Cares, you can find me at Robert Taylor Jr. Uh, for my music, you can follow me at Rob LaRay. That's my middle name. So that's Rob.L-A-R-A-Y. Awesome. How can we follow you, Amber? <laughs> at Mojo Flow Music, M-O-J-O-F-L-O Music. And I'm Amber Nicole with a K. So it's Amber, K-N-I-C-O-L-E, out there in the world. That's my middle name, too. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Nick, how can we find you? Um, you can find uh, We Amplify Voices at weamplifyvoices.org. And then um, I have some uh, solo music as well under uh, Nicholas D'Andrea. Beautiful. Look at that connection and camaraderie you were talking about. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much. Let's give the panelists a round of applause. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, I just wanted to say also on Music Columbus's website, we do have a health services center with Music Cares and other organizations that offer guidance on health insurance and community and group therapy sessions. They offer all kinds of other resources. So check out Music Cares there as well as some of these other organizations at our website, musicclumbus.com. And thank you all again so much for this amazing conversation and thank you all for coming out. <laughs>